how to conduct market research for your coaching business. If this topic interests you, you want to what? Tap in. Okay, tap in. Make sure you subscribe and click the notification bell because we're going in. Stay to the end because I'm going to be dropping bonuses throughout this five step process. Hello, my name is Jackie. If this is your first time meeting me, hello. Thank you for joining me. It doesn't matter if you got seasoning in the game, meaning you have a more experience as being a coach, you're just beginning, or you 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 you're somewhere in between. Market research is vital for the success of your business. Now, I mentioned in a video the previous video about why you need to do market research. You already know that just in case you have not, you missed those corners that I laid out and those Easter eggs I gave in though that video, I'm going to put it uh, somewhere in one of these corners. It'll definitely be down in the description. So the first step, pull my chair up a little bit so I can talk to y'all. You want to define your objective with this market research. What are you trying to find out? Now, when you do this, this is a bonus. Sometimes it can be a little tricky and, and fully out, uh, defining or clarifying what your objective is. It should be more than just make money. Okay. What does it take for you to make money? The more specific and the detail you are with your object objective, the easier it will be to complete and your uh market research. Not only complete it, know what you got in the end, okay? Know what, if you're looking for, if you know you're looking for a rare flower that only is grown in the country of Ghana on the continent, of Africa, then guess what? You're only going to gather the information that's relevant to that objective. You're not going to go to the United States, to Florida, and find a, a rose when that doesn't meet your expectations. That doesn't meet your requirements. What are you looking for? Okay. Which is your ultimate goal with a uh, with conducting this market research. Let's say, for example, we're going to use this example. Say that you have grabbed my uh, popular and profitable lead magnet guide and you've discovered a popular and profitable niche is advertising, okay? Social media advertising. And you work in the medical field. You, in fact, let's go deeper. Let's say you work for or used to work for clinics. And so you have a inkling that there are some uh, popular and profitable areas to explore. But you want to make sure that your idea is the best idea where you can stand in your zone of genius. Okay, you want to see your objective is to, is to create Facebook ads advertising to reach your ideal client and to let them know that you have uh, available services and this is what they need and this is why they're needed. Copy. So you decide that you want to go after surgeons because that's your zish. Zish. Okay. So you've already come uh, made a brain dump. When you do a brain dump, a brain dump is not just about saying this and saying that and dumping all out these ideas. A brain dump is also necessity and really clearly defining your objective. That's my bonus information. Secondly, you want to do, write out who is your targeted audience. Remember, I mentioned that flower that's only in Ghana that's um, that's uh, 
only in Ghana, a rare flower. You may mention the exact city in that country where you find that. What are the people like? Who are you selling it to? Is your targeted audience? Who are you trying to reach with this product? If I am a Facebook ads uh, manager or a coach and my target audience are plastic surgeons, where are they? Are they in Ghana? Are they in the United States? Are they in Mexico? Where are they? Maybe they're they they are in California. Let's say they are in LA. I'm trying to reach plastic surgeons. Let uh, surgeons know that I am available for these services. I have a valuable program that can increase their profit margin and. I'm looking for surgeons that do specific sur uh that need this particular service. What are their pain points? What are their interests? They may be ha what are their problems? Okay, this is the customer. This way you can develop an understanding of that ideal client. Okay, because you've written the things down. Now, this is before you actually dig deep. This is what which, which you came off of the, to the top of the dome, okay? D dome and what you found when you used my profitable, my popular and profitable niche and lead magnet guide. Okay, the next step is you want to identify the trends. We already mentioned that we do Facebook ads. Our our ideal client or our target customers are surgeons in California, more specifically in L.A., offering a plastic surgery. Let's even go deeper. Let's say they in Beverly Hills, okay? Plastic surgery in Beverly Hills. Who would have thought it? What are the, this in this section, we're going to identify the trends. What is popping in that area? Okay, we noticed that a couple of things that, that are in demand in that industry are BBLs, Botox, filler. Is that something that uh, we can do? What about those things? We want to look at our competitors. What are, is there something that our competitors are offering? Now, our, our competitors don't necessarily have to just be people who are on social media because we are a coach and uh, we offer our, ser our services on social media. They could, our competitors could even be people who do um, ads and ads on, on apps like, um, Roku or people who do ads in the movie theaters or people who do ads anywhere there's ads on these specific acts like Hulu and, and Disney Plus. Whoever our competitors or we believe our competitors are, we're going to do a deep look. We're going to get nosy in this section. And now when I tell you to get nosy, that doesn't mean that you copy word for word what they did, how they did it, what they had they programmed. Listen, that is not your ministry. That is not your zone of genius. We stand over here in our yard concerning that. The reason why we go look at the competitors is we're looking to see what the what's out there in the market for the uh to sell, to sell and advertise, to cause engagement, to get visibility for our business, for our business. Um, what are their what What are their weaknesses? What works well? You'll be surprised because sometimes you think somebody's a competitor, and then you turn around and they end up being a customer because you found out what their issue was and you created a solution. Y'all write that down. That's a bonus as well. The next step is you want to gather, you want to continue to, You next step is you want to gather data and insight on the 
on their followers or on their customers. So the first part in number three, you notice we focused on the competitors. On the next step, we're going to focus more on the customers. If they are on social media, let's say they're on, let's say they're on Instagram. They're on Instagram because there's people who live in Beverly Hills or somewhere near or Calabasas or wherever, and they're on social media. Do they follow this page? Do they comment on this page? What are they saying? Okay, has this, in this area, we're going to look for data and we're going to do a, a minimum of a 90-day period. Now, that could be historical. You can go 90 days back. You can uh, go from current to 90 days, or you can do a future date because you know, after you've gathered this market research, this is the area that you're going to continue to monitor even after you've reached a conclusion from your market research. That is a bonus, that 90-day period. Now, I want to be clear. This does not stop you from implementing your program because I say 90 days. You can start your business before 90 days. One of the things I, I tell my people in my business planning course is you're going to forever be conduct conducting market research because there's periods of times that you're going to be monitoring. I'm not going to go in detail of that, but remember you're going to use his, you can use historical data, current and future information and that's information you're going to be tracking concerning the customers, okay? And here's another bonus in this area of gathering. If just because somebody named Mary comes on and always put emojis uh, emojis on in the comments does not mean that they're giving value. Now, this is the customer. Is the customer giving value? If they are not giving value or taking the time to put complete sentences, real comments on, they are not even worth your time in gathering that information. Okay. So in this section, you're actually going to go on their social media page, see where they hang out, okay? See what they do. If they had, you know, because people are very upfront when it comes to uh, plastic surgery. They'll talk about their nose. They may be talking about they wish they had the money for a BBL, why they don't have a BBL, why they wouldn't even uh, go through that. And this may be information where you can reach your particular audience because you are trying to help the plastic surgery increase their profit. So you gathering this information is very important because these are customers of these are customers of the competitors. They may even be customers of the pe type of people you're trying to help. You're going to write that information down because the next step, the fifth step is where we analyze and interpret. We're going to analyze uh, the week of, I'm just going to give an example. Say we're going to analyze the uh, March 3rd week with March 10th. Were there anything, were there any, did anything happen during those, that period? Did somebody shut down in that area? Um, what was the cause of the change? Was this a positive impact or was it or was a was it because of bad ratings? What's really going on in that for those for that competitor for that customer? What information you're gonna interpret that information and analyze the patterns, the trends, the opportunity. Um, because this is going to allow you to perfect your marketing messaging, the products you offer, and your overall business approach. You're going to be able to decide whether you need to market your customers by picking up the phone, sending out email flyers, um, reaching out to them on social media. This is why we analyze and take the time to do because 
once you you collected the data, you are able to make better decisions. And because you make better decisions, you you achieve the results that you desire. You have better uh, outcomes and a deeper understanding, thus gaining knowledge and growing your business. Okay, here's another bonus. After you've done all that, you're going to uh, create a strategy, an actionable strategy and implement the, the plan. While you're doing that, you're going to continue. And this where this cut this where this 90 day future data collecting come, because then you'll have internal information. You're going to go from external one through five, one through five was all based on external. Now, after we, when we get into the implement implementation and the action strategy part this is where we start to gather internal um internal data we're going to do a 90 day uh continuous research using the same steps except we're going to focus on on our business you're going to still pay attention to what you've gathered and the changes from the competitors of the customers, but you're also going to take the time and use the same method when it comes to internal data. There you have it. My five step process to easily conduct market research. Listen, if you all have any questions concerning market research, I'm here to answer it. Please post your questions down below.